So I'm about 5 foot 8 inches and a little bit. That's not really short, it's not, but it's also not super tall. No one's ever passed me in the street and thought, there goes a really tall guy. And being a little bit shorter, I face certain assumptions from people in the gym. One is that I can't be quite as strong as my taller brethren. Reason being that they have bigger frames and thus they've got more space to fill out with muscle. More muscle equals more power. The other assumption is that because I'm smaller, it's easier for me to fill out the frame that I do have. Therefore, I'm kind of cheating when I look strong because I don't have to work as hard or eat as much protein. So is this true? As is so often the case, it turns out that there's a bit more to it than that. So if you've watched my other videos or read my blog, then you will know that there's more to strength than just the amount of muscle you have on your bone. Things like muscle fibre recruitment, things like fast twitch versus slow twitch muscle fibres, etc. But even if it was true that having more muscle automatically meant you were stronger, it wouldn't necessarily follow that taller people would therefore be stronger. That's because the size of your bone is not the only factor determining how much muscle you've got on it. Another important factor is your muscle belly to tendon ratio. So if you take the bicep, the, bi the muscle belly is the part of the bicep you know, that's actually the bicep, it's the muscle. But your upper arm is not entirely covered in muscle, it's also covered in tendon. The tendon is what attaches the bicep to the arm. So some of that space is taken up by muscle and some of it is taken up by tendon. If you have a very long tendon, that leaves you with less space for your muscle. This is a poor muscle to tendon ratio. On the other hand though, if you have very short tendons, then you have space for more muscle on the bone. So it's not just about how long the bone is, but also how much of it is covered in muscle. You could be very tall, but you could be all tendon. And I'm sure most of us know people in life who are kind of very tall and lanky and all sinewy. And that's partly probably why. Another factor that influences on your strength that's kind of related to size, but not directly, is the lever arm. So if you think of bicep curls again, let's say I'm curling a dumbbell. So my biceps here, which is supplying the force, and it's attaching by the tendon to the forearm. The length of the forearm is going to influence how much pressure, how much power I need to exert in order to move the dumbbell. The longer the arm, the more strength I actually need in order to move it, because it's further away from the axis of rotation where the muscle is attaching. The easiest way to think about this is to imagine digging with a spade. If you dig with a spade in the garden, you're trying to lift up big chunks of dirt, but they are at the end of the spade where the actual shovel end is. So you need to apply more force from that end in order to lever the dirt up. If the spade is shorter, you can lift the same amount of dirt more easily. So actually in this scenario, having a longer forearm would be detrimental to your performance because you need to apply more strength because you'd have a longer lever arm. This is not just true of bicep curls, it's true in all sorts of different exercises where the ratios of your limbs and your torso all play different roles. So for instance, if you're doing squats, then you actually want shorter legs for the simple reason that you're then closer to the ground. You can lift more weight for more repetitions because you're not traveling as far. And if you're doing deadlifts, then you actually want shorter legs and longer arms because the long arms can make up some of the distance. So you have to squat down less far. This is also why you shouldn't teach everybody in the gym using the same technique, because depending on the shape of their body and their natural ratios and proportions, they're gonna perform better in some ways than other people will. So listen to your body, because your body knows intuitively how it should move, and what you get from a book isn't necessarily gonna take into account the different proportions for your joints and bones and limb lengths. That doesn't mean you should ignore your trainer when he tells you to stop arching your back during a deadlift or a squat, but it does mean you need to take into account that what's right for you won't necessarily be right for someone else, and you need to find your own optimal way of moving. And that's not even all of it. Another factor to consider is your tendon insertions. The tendon insertion is the point at which the tendon attaches to the bone. So even if you've got a very long forearm, this could be mitigated somewhat if the insertion is further along, thus meaning that the actual lever arm is shorter. Of course, you wouldn't have an insertion up here, but you get my point. 
So yeah, there are far more factors involved in strength and performance than just your height. You've also got the amount of muscle you've got compared to your tendons, you've got where the tendons insert, you've got the proportions of your different lever arms and limbs. So you could be very tall and very lanky and covered in tendon, or you could be very short and compact and powerful. You could also be short and packed with tendon and very, you know, petite. There's all kinds of different combinations. You've got to play the hand you're dealt. You've got to emphasize your strengths and bring up your weaknesses. You've got to find the techniques that are best for you and just work with what you've got because these are genetic factors that you can't change. What you can do is to increase muscle size through hypertrophy, increase the muscle fiber recruitment and just make yourself the best version of what you've been given. So I hope you found this interesting and useful guys. If you did, please consider leaving a like and a share. Um, really helps me out when you do. Maybe leave a comment down below and I'll try and get back to you. You can also follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. I post most of my workouts there and all kinds of other stuff. And of course, stay tuned if you want more videos on working out, on brain training, productivity, technology, fitness, performance, etc. You name it, it'll be here. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.